Hello everyone and welcome to Cymatic TV. Uh, this is going to be an energy update on the X flares uh, that have been going on. We did, I did predict those X flares coming out um, and I predicted it around about a month ago. Um, and I was saying between the 16th and the 21st of March, which we have seen the kick up on that. So we're going to be going into the X flare. Uh, seeing how that's going to maybe affect the Earth, us, uh, everything that is around us. Uh, we're also going to be going into a little bit of um, pole shift as well. There's been a few stories that have come out uh, that, well, that I've seen recently that I'd like to share with you about pole shift. And also a little bit about how it's going to be affecting, how all of this energy uptick is going to be affecting your spirit, your physical, and your moral sort of uh, life, as it were. Okay? So without further ado, let's just get into the sun. Don't believe, just know. Cymatic TV, turning vibration into reality. So here we go, we're at the sun here. This is the eruption, um, this is over the last week, and you can see the main stuff that was going on is coming round the corner here, but there's a lot of filament energies that have been going on, uh, mixing in with this, and this is good. We are in a transitional moment. We are going from a high cycle to a low cycle now. So as you can see before us here, this is what is called the X-ray flux. Now, the X-ray flux here is um, uh, sort of, it shows the ups and downs, the explosions of the sun. And then we have M flares, we have X flares, and it normally stays around the B and the C mark. Around this period here where you can, in this period, this section here, um, but here we go back to the 18th, and we started getting picking up with M flares on the 16th, and then it started coming through, coming closer, tipping forward to the X flare, and then it died down just a little bit, a few M flares still on the radar, and then this very close X flare here that came through on the 20th. And then since the evening of the 22nd, things have really taken a turn for a difference. And here we can see on the sun, you can see a lot of eruptions going on here, all different types, really. And a lot of filament energy is coming our way, which is a very water element uh, based. So it's very emotionally charged. And it's these two puppies here that as it came round to us and it started facing us, that's when it started getting those X flares. And just look at that around this section here. Just look at what's been coming over the last few days. Uh, this is where we're going back. Here we're going back to the 21st here. And as we come through for the 21st, you can see that filament there that's beautifully dancing and feeding that sunspot there. That's the emotions feeding our fiery passions, as it were. And then it sort of releases off a uh, flare there. That goes out at the top of the, the Earth. It's not going to be hitting the Earth. And that's a lot of plasma that's coming off in that section there that you can see. Um, and then as it goes forward and then it starts reforming and then we get the double whammy from the top and the bottom which is what happens on the 22nd there you go you get that first eruption there it looks like someone's getting up the dance doesn't it wow and then you have the little eruption on the lower lower side as well there's the there it is there uh, and so it's sort of like a double triple whammy in a way that went through on this but these are not the only energies that were coming through different types of vibrations or different types of eruptions from the sun provoke different types of energies um, i equate the solar flares which is what we saw on the x-ray flux where it is x-rays a lot of proton activity as well uh, that's more to do with air and fire um, and then you have corona holes which is to do with earth and then you have filament which is to do with water so um this is not the only vibrations that's coming through. As we saw, there was the X flares and the, um, you know, the solar, solar eruptions in that sense and the sunspots. But there was also the filament energies. But not only that, we had the Earth energies as well. So everything seems to be playing in at once. And this vibration is obviously going to affect the Earth. And then it will affect you in your, t in your due time as well. We all get affected by it. And when the different types of energies, we get affected in different types of way, ways. So let's just have a quick look at the coronal hole. So here you can see that first eruption there, that filament energy. So that's emotional energy, which you can see down there in the bottom right there um, of the sun. It comes off, but it doesn't really hit the earth. 
uh, in, in our direction. And that was around about the sort of um, the 17th of March. And as we come further down round through, and we're now up to the 18th, 19th, we start getting contact with this corona hole. Now that's that earth energy. So we're starting off with emotional energy uh, around about the 16th, 17th, and then we're moving on to constructive energy, earth energy. So what comes out of that emotion? What is the physical reproduction or uh, repercussion of that, um, that filament energy? And you may have noticed over the last week that you had an emotional impact in your life in some form or another, but then after that, you were able to talk it through, put a little bit of, you know, a little bit of meat on the bone, as it were. So then you can really work through that emotional situation uh, with maybe your partner or with people that are around you in a very physical sense. Um, and then, because you've worked through it, then you get the solar flare that kicks off on the 22nd, which will be hitting us today, the 24th of March. Um, in the evening time, GMT time, um, that's going to give us this passion of that emotional release at the beginning of the week, the conversion into the physical sense, and then we'll build into the passion sort of saying, well, if we can confront our emotional thing in this way, and we can physically deal with it in this way, in that case, we can actually start building our passions in another way. I'm getting major camera shuddering from the wind. I do apologize. Um, so yes, that's the sort of progressional thing that's been going on. So when you can notice this in the sun, you can understand what you are going through. This is really important for your mental health, for your physical health, for your spiritual health, for all of those sort of angles of your life. Once you understand what the environment is around you, if you know it's cold, you're going to put on a jumper. It's as simple as that. So you can take away a lot of the anxiety that we create around ourselves, kind of going, oh, why am I having this? Why am I having this emotional effect? Why am I being woken up during the middle of the night? Now, I even speak with Tanya about this as well. And it goes into a lot about menopause and so forth for any sort of females and entrepause for males as well. Um, this affects the solar effect is remarkable on people. But we also see that in my healing. When I do my healing on a daily basis, um, I've noticed, noticed the increase in um, skin conditions over the past week. It's calming down now because we're, we're going through that sort of release of that energy from within that comes to the physical surface. And that's why we get the eczema. And now we're getting the solar flare that picks up, which should reduce the... Um, uh, sort of effects of eczema and that's and so forth that is going on for on with us. So it has been multitude of effects over the past week, week and a half, and you may well have noticed it in your life. If you have, tell the group about it. Put it in the comments down below. It's important that we all know. For me personally, I went through amazingly emotional things in the last week. It's been traumatically brilliant, um, and being able to talk about it and uh, explore the ideas and finding out where things lay has made for something that is much more passionable for the future. You know, there's my personal contribution. I don't have, you don't have to go into too much detail, but you can explain the, the overall flow because that's the most important thing, I think, more than anything else when we're dealing with human and um, energies. Okay, let's just have a look at how this sort of affected mainly the earth so here is the earthquake map just over the last sort of day and a half and this is to do with the coronal hole look at that 6.9 that's down in a sort of indonesia uh that was there earlier on let me just bring that back up and show that there uh, there it is there that 6.9 and it had a tsunami warning with it i'm not sure if that actually came through but this is to do with the coronal hole and how the coronal hole affects the earth it affects it in a very physical sense as much as i was saying about the eczema in people as well um the same thing you get with the earth that the emotional uptick then breeds through in the coronal holes where you get surface breakout so you get like equivalent of earthquakes 
Volcanoes are a little bit more sort of deeper, but they can be also affected by this whole sort of affair. But look at it, it's all around this section here, which is all around the big ones are all around sort of Indonesia and so forth. So we're talking about the conversion between um, the, um, the, the heart's desire, the emotional side of life, uh, which is being converted between the solar plexus, which is the much more sort of physical and the, the fiery side of life. This is where it's coming to the surface and it's building up through our crown chakra and our, and our root chakra, which we can also see here on the earthquake map and also around the sacrum as well. So um, the thing that is being taken out of this, though, is the third eye and the throat chakra. And uh, it was much more prevalent in the earlier parts of the week. Uh, and this may have felt, made you feel like um, that it was non-existent, um, maybe a couple of days ago, of not feeling at one with yourself, almost like um, that you're not it's almost like after a drunken haze the next day, you know, the majority of us have all had that sort of scenario, a little bit like that. And it was, may have been difficult to think or to sort of express oneself. And this sort of vibration affects everybody on multitudes of different sort of levels and depends on what you're sort of living on and living in, but, um, or your living life. Um, um, but for me personally, it just, it zapped the idea of um, quicker thinking and feeling, yeah, just out of sort, as it were. So we get this effect on the earth as well. And it's at the moment, it's charging mainly the plexus, so, the solar plexus. And the connection between the solar plexus, our fire in our belly, our passions, and how we're now going to convert it into the third eye and the throat chakra. So I, uh, yeah, third eye and the throat chakra, which we find in um, Japan. So up in this section around here. So over the next few days, just pay attention to the sort of earthquakes that are going to be happening that in that section there around Japan and, and moving towards Alaska region on that Alaska bridge, because I think it's going to stimulate all of these sort of things. The solar flare that has been coming in our direction is going to really, is it going to hit us full blown? It depends on what model you're looking at. So let's just have a look at the two prediction models. Here we have Iswa. And Iswa, on that date there, it's talking about the 24th, um, around about sort of six o'clock in the evening GMT time. That's when it's first going to be hitting. But this is a very, I find it sometimes a bit of a flat model. And yet I think it's definitely coming in our direction because that's the, the sunspots or the eruptions are facing Earth when it happens. And we'll also see that on the C2 to find out how we know about this, how about the particles are actually coming in our way. Um, but if we were looking at something different, let's look at the uh, Enrol spiral now, which is slightly different. And this, I like this spiral because it gives us the up and down as much as horizontal view of it all. Um, and when we look at this on the Enrol spiral, it's coming through here which is, yes, it comes through in exactly the sort of uh, direction of the Earth, because the Earth is in this section here. Um, but as it comes through on this, on this part here, you can see that it's slightly above. And in this uh, lower section, you can see it's even more sort of west than it is the main cloud of it around in this section here. The main cloud of it is out the front of us. And yes, we do get a, a sort of, swipe as it were um by the by the um uh, by the x-ray flare that comes off uh in our direction and they're predicting the similar sort of time of arrival uh just in the evening of the 24th uh coming through as it comes through there uh which is sunday the 24th when it's giving a side swipe it affects us in a different way when it's directly hitting us it's much more on a physical level when it's a side swipe because it's two electrodes that are going past each other, there's a lot more electromagnetic sort of going on. So I think it's going to be affecting a lot more in the way of um, storms, weather patterns, electrical things. It's also going to be affecting the way we think, the way in which we engage in life. It's going to make our thinking a little bit more sort of zippy, a little bit more sort of um, speedy. Now, if you're not in a good place, that could be a really bad thing. If you're in a really low place, that could actually be quite a good thing for you. 
You know, it depends on what you're living. This is why it's so important to know what's coming up, what's coming through the system. This is why it's important to pay attention to these sort of things. So you can see what the overall energies, the universal vibrations are actually bringing to your life. And you can get the best out of it. You can use it in a very, very productive way. So here we have the sun here. This is The sun is blocked out by this disc here, so we can see the corona that is around it. And this is uh, on the 19th here at the I Speak. And you can see those different types of eruptions. They're sending stuff out all over the place. And as it comes close to us, and here is that big whack there, which you can see the sun, the earth is a speck of dust on that black disc in the middle. And that is billions of times the size of the earth. But as it goes through, then you can start seeing a lot more white snowflakey things that start hitting the this screen here, hitting the around it here. Uh, the, the, and it just shows the particles that are definitely, because this, this satellite is in, in direct line between the Earth and the Sun, and it shows these particles that are actually coming through. Let's have a look at a, a, a deeper view, a longer view. And here we go here. This is, um, this is a lot longer out, so you can see the stars moving past in the background. And often you can see the planets moving around in the background. Um, and as it's coming through, as we come through here, you can see that eruption that's earlier on. That's the filament eruption that came up earlier. And then eventually we come to the section where the, the filament eruption to the north, that's that one there. And then we have the ultimate X flare, which comes up just now there. Look at that. It is massive. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I will say now, this is not an extinction event. That to have an extinction, extinction event, you need multitudes of scenarios that need to be in place. Now, I talk about it in my book, which is called The Event, um, and it talks about a coronal hole coming through first, which is a slower energy. Then it has a filament energy that comes up a day after. That's a midterm sort of speed energy. And then you have the solar flare that comes at the end, which is the fast energy. And they all arrive at Earth at the same time. But it also depends on where we are in the galactic plane. Uh, and moving from the hemisphere, the southern hemisphere of the galactic plane to the northern hemisphere of the galactic plane. And that's what pole shift is all about. So let's just go in and just see what's that article that I was talking about with pole shift. Uh, and this is all about um, NOAA climate and uh, NASA scientists. And they're talking about the polar vortex and how it is changing direction uh, in this particular time. And this is typical for pole shift. When pole shift happens, it doesn't just turn like that. That's not, that's not how it goes. Um, it, there is a section of the Earth which you, you will perceive it moving like that. But actually, pole shift is like goes through itself and comes out the other end with the surface stuff that gets caught up in the, in the mixing of it, uh, of that sort of inversion. And within that mixing is a particular way in which the energy needs to turn on itself before it can invert. And it's, um, and you can see that on one of my videos. I'll try and uh, bring it up here. I'll try and find it here with how to invert a sphere from one side to another. It's very interesting and it explains exactly how the energies are going. Now that effect of going from one to the other is the same thing as when we're going through the galactic plane from the southern to the northern hemisphere. So we're going from a negative vibration into a positive vibration. Now, I'm not talking about negative and positive in the way of uh, your personal opinion and your emotions. We're talking about magnetics here, positively charged and negatively charged. And this is what pole shift is all about. We do it periodically, or the Earth does it periodically. And, but it does affect us. So if you imagine you have a uh, energy system, which we call an aura, with chakras, which are like um, fuses, if you like, within the system, or um, light switches within the system. At the moment, we're going through a section where we have the crown chakra and the root chakra. But if the energy inverts, surely your crown chakra will eventually become your root chakra. Maybe your heart will become your solar plexus and your solar plexus becomes your heart. 
in theory, if one goes to the other, it's just how we apply our attention or our energy into those centers in a different way and how those energy centers are affected will change. So we may well get much more upset emotionally by people who are very passionate in the future. This is all part of the pole system and we will get very passionate about our emotions. These things are being inverted rather than having the emotions that sort of says, oh yeah, lovely, it's really nice being warmed up by the solar plexus. Now it's kind of going, oh, my emotions are here and my passions are going to be really, uh, make those emotions very, very uh, violent in the way sometimes. So, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that we need to be attentive of when we're talking about pole shift. And NASA seems to be giving us information here, as we can well see about this. I will leave a link to this article in here. And they talk about an atmosphere dance party. Who's the wallflower and who's the, who's the extrovert uh, on this sort of section here? And I think this makes it very true to how you engage in your, um, your emotions and the, and, the, um, and the energies that are around you because you get these splitting vortexes which we can see on these sort of things. Here is the vortex here. This is going back quite some time because I was looking at over days behind, uh, but it goes back to, that is the, uh, the 22nd of February, a month ago. Um, unfortunately, I've got no internet here, so I can't really go further than that. But it shows these splittings of the vortex. And this is, could come down to the splittings of our, our crown chakra, our way of thinking as well. And this splitting doesn't really help sort of for, for um, sort of um, bipolarism, by like schizophrenia and that sort of thing. It doesn't help us. Um, so being very attentive in those sort of times is really important. How does this actually work? I am doing another video on this, which will be coming out on the emotional effect and how the sun affects us emotionally, morally, um, uh, sort of physically in a way, but much more on the energetic sort of side spiritual sort of side i will be doing a video about that you'll be able to see it It will be around about my head at some point um but this is all to do with what is the proton surge that comes through from that solar flare that was that that filament energy that erupted before, beforehand and as it does kick in the x flare, this is what happens it starts really resonating our polar regions but also in the midsection where it's getting a direct hit from the sun and it is absolutely phenomenal, the, the proton that really does hit the, the Earth. And that will be ringing for quite a few days. And this effect of the, of the solar flare will be affecting us physically, morally, and et cetera, for the next week or so. It'll also be affecting the Earth for all these sort of periods of time. But the thing is with proton, this is almost instantaneous. And this is where we need to understand how the energy is actually transferred from one thing to another. And this is where we get into your auras and your chakra. Um, the energy transfer, you cannot give, and I've, been, I've got a healing school, I've done loads of healings over my life, um, you know, tens of thousands of people I've seen. Um, and um, it's one thing that people have difficulty and have understanding. You cannot actually give your energy to someone else. And someone else cannot actually give your energy. And as I say, we will be going into a separate video about this uh, and answering questions from people that have given me uh, according to spirits, um, guides, that sort of thing, which goes much more into my sort of spiritual sort of uh, energetic, sort of my, uh, my energy work in my healing work. Um, and the proton transfer or explains how energy really works so if you imagine you have a tube in front of you that is full of ball bearings you take a ball bearing and you put it in one side and it pushes all the ball bearings which then makes one ball bearing fall out from the other i haven't although i've put a ball bearing into the system i haven't actually given you that exact ball bearing it has gone through the system. As it goes through the system, then it finally comes out and out the other side. And that's what affects you. So we are affected by the resonance of energy. 
We are not affected by physical energy transferal. It is impossible to do. The reason it is impossible to do, because nature, or God if you like, is fantastic. It worked out already that no one thing can have control over the energy of another. That we are all dependent upon energy, yes, but at no point can then I decide to give you or take away your energy. If I had that capacity, I could actually take control energetically across the entire universe. The universe has understood this. The universe, or God, or nature, whatever you wish to call it, is so way ahead of the curve than us humans. We are microscopic in its comparison. Okay, but understanding how it affects our universe, our energy, is the most important thing. And this is a principle that you should really understand. And we will be going into a lot more into that about energy and how it affects us and what auras are in this other video, the second video. This is mainly about the sun and how the sun affects us. But understanding this information of the sun and how it produces what the ancients would call prana energy or ki energy or pranuma energy or um, braka energy or there's a multitude of different cultures who explains this concept of energy of that comes from the universe comes through mother earth and affects us as individuals if you can understand that our ancestors were not just stupid idiots in a cave we would understand that we're not that intelligent we've actually just been intelligent in the technology that we're using but we still have the same understandings that all of our ancestors had already and they understood it how do they understand it they understand it with all of this stuff nature everything you want to know about energy can be found in everything that is around you it's just a question of looking an understanding of how to ask the right questions. That is really important. Once you do that, you know how to learn. You can learn anything, and you are dependent upon no one to learn that energy. The only thing that you are dependent upon is energy itself. That second video will be linked around my head. I will be um, going out doing some more dowsing, getting some chakra sequencing, and some aura, uh, some uh, energy uh, sort of uh, uh, messages from the uh, earth. I'll get it out in a minute. Do apologize. Um, I'll be doing that during the week. We've also got an eclipse video coming out and talking about the energies of an eclipse and how it affects the chakras on the earth and how it may be affecting you as well. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for being here. Really do appreciate your support uh, for this channel. Really do appreciate it. Um, share this far and wide. It'd be lovely to see. Uh, yes, I thank you very much. In the meantime, that's all for me left to say. Is don't forget, life should be fun, so please do enjoy.